Sometimes you can be browsing through a stack of records or discs or books and you come across something you've never heard of, but something about it catches your eye, you buy it, you take it home, and it turns out you love it. The same thing can happen with computer software titles. Everybody's heard of WordPerfect or Excel, Windows or Tetris, but have you ever heard of Commander Keen or Big Cheese or Prism? Today we'll show you some great software titles that have never made it to any bestseller list or even to the shelves of some retail stores as we take a look at sleeper software on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. The Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by the Software Publishers Association, which reminds you it's a federal offense to copy software. The SBA provides information on how to stay software legal. Funding is also provided by PC Connection and Mac Connection, and by Byte Magazine and Bix. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe, and with me this week is Jan Lewis. Hi, Stuart. Jan, up on the Macintosh here is a kind of legendary piece of shareware, a program that first came out in 1984 called Red Rider, a communications program. And of course, when it first came out, you could only get it by downloading it off a bulletin board or making a copy from one of your friends and so on. But it's evolved over six years into a major commercial product, big fancy box now. It's called White Knight. comes with a proper manual that explains it all. It's real-time stuff. Is it still possible now in 1991 to, to repeat that kind of story? Can a little guy develop something in his garage and really move it along into the commercial, as a commercial product? Yes, absolutely. A little guy in his garage without a lot of money cannot go into the retail channel directly. Yeah. However, the little guy still can put their software up on various BBSs and bulletin boards and various shareware uh, distribution systems. And in fact, you might even say that it's easier now because there's been a proliferation of mm -hmm. bulletin boards. And in fact, more and more users are logging on to these systems and downloading uh -huh. software. Well, that's good news. Jan, today we'll take a look at several software gems that are relatively unknown from utilities to games to productivity tools. Now, the main underground path to commercial software stardom has traditionally been shareware. And we're going to start today by finding out more about the shareware process as we visit with an official of the Association of Shareware Professionals. Here's a report. Getting a slick software package on the shelf requires a financial investment not many beginning programmers can afford. For such people marketing their products as shareware is the next best alternative. But simply listing their programs on a bulletin board system is not enough. Customers complain that lack of support from authors and programs written with bugs are major headaches with shareware. But buying a product endorsed by the Association of Shareware Professionals, or ASP, can guard against such problems. Formed in 1987, the ASP has set stringent guidelines for its member programmers. In order to join ASP, they have to review your program and decide that it's, quote, non-trivial, unquote, and basically something that couldn't be done in an afternoon. Then you agree to certain minimum support standards. You agree also not to, the program cannot be crippled in any way. In other words, the user gets a fully working program in the shareware version. But because profits from selling shareware don't automatically follow, ASP says persistence is also key for the programmers. The developer has to have a lot of patience. He's not doing national ads that's going to put his product in front of people. So he has to realize that, for the most part, the first year is just getting his product out there and getting people to see it. The big thing is patience. The big thing is improving it and persistence, just being out there, improving the product. And all, everywhere you go, realize there are potential users, people who might be interested in your product. But even that, the association says, is only possible if users adhere to the number one rule of shareware. Shareware is allowed to exist because, because the user pays for it. If you get a shareware program and you're using it, if you like the program, you have to realize the person who's writing this program will only continue to improve this program and make a better program for you if people like you pay for it. So you support shareware and shareware will support you. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Kate McGargy.
One of the main sources of good but little-known software is online information services, or bulletin boards. And here to show us some of their favorites are Guy Scharf, a sysop with CompuServe, and Teresa Carey, sysop with PC Magnet. Jen? Teresa, when you log on for the first time, there's hundreds of uh, software packages that you could download. Uh, how do you decide what sort of tools are there to tell you what's there and which ones are popular and give you some guidance? Oh, there are so many ways to find files on CompuServe because there are a variety of places where they're stored. Uh, on PC Magnet, for example, we have the PC Magnet Utilities Database that you search using a menu system. To get around the libraries within CompuServe and PC Magnet, you would get one of the library management software programs available, most of which are shareware. Mm -hmm. All right, Guy, you have some neat things you want to show us, and I want to get right to it. And the first one is 4DOS. What is 4DOS? Right. 4DOS is a command.com replacement. Uh, as such, it's got all of the same commands that uh, DOS command.com has, plus many more. For example, we have a help system that is built in here. We can pick up help on a particular command and see full description and mm -hmm. samples. We also have hypertext links to other commands, so we can browse through our help system and continue to look at different commands. Mm -hmm. The uh, commands themselves are enhanced. For example, the uh, copy command. If we wanted to copy files to another directory but wanted to be prompted for each uh, file, we could mm -hmm. enter a command that would do that say whether or not we wanted each one to copy. Oh. Similarly, there's a move command that will move files to, uh, the other, to another directory, and you can ask to be prompted if it is to replace the command, that's uh -huh. the file that's there. By, uh, that way you don't accidentally overwrite something. Uh, directories are uh, often a problem in uh, DOS. You have a directory and you have thousands of files. We still have thousands of files, of course, but now they are sorted alphabetically. Mm -hmm. the, uh, you can find what you're looking for. A very useful feature, particularly when you have so many files, is that you cannot uh, remember what the name is. So you, we have a way to add descriptions to the mm -hmm. files here. And we can have a 40 oh, character great. description yeah, associated nice. with a file. Uh, of course, we can mo edit it and modify it. Right. There are lots of other things I know 4DOS can do. I want to ask yes. you to move along now and show us the next one you wanted to show us, which okay. is LCD. LCD is a program to allow you to move between directories on your hard disk very easily. If you've got a large hard disk with multiple drives and hundreds or even thousands of directories, finding the directory you want to go to can be difficult. Right. So you just type LCD San Fran, for example, and it will go to the directory name San Fran. Hmm. Another thing you can do is if there are several directories by the same name, you get a list of those directories, just move the cursor to the one you want, press return, and there you are. That's mm -hmm. great. Okay, you have one more thing, uh, wallpaper for Windows. What is okay. that? Okay, let's start up uh, Windows, and uh, while we're starting it, we'll look at the, uh, the other program, the yeah, LJ2. Yeah, what is this? Up. This is a program that, to save paper uh, by printing uh, up to four... Could you just hold those up so our certainly. audience can see that? Four uh, pages on a single physical sheet of paper. You get four times as much printout on the same amount of paper. Uh, and of course, if you're needing to read the stuff, you can see four times as much in the same physical space on your table. So you can save, Very handy. <coughs> save paper by a factor of two or four, right. in fact. Save filing cabinet space, too. Guy, okay, I noticed that 4DOS has a manual that goes with it. How does the user get the manual after they've downloaded the software? Okay. Uh, as with most shareware products, the uh, manual is uh, what you get when you register it. So when you register the product by sending in, in this case, the uh, $50 registration fee for 4DOS, you get back the manual and a registered copy of the program. Guy, okay, an example of wallpaper now. Okay. The, uh, we go into the control panel, pick up the desktop uh, option, and in the desktop there is wallpaper. Okay, which is, which is different backgrounds, basically. Different backgrounds. More interesting backgrounds than just boring gray. So we have white. a lot of different backgrounds here. Let's bring up this one, and we'll see what it looks like. Wow. And here uh -huh. we have a scene. And you've got a whole library of different scenes. There are literally thousands there. of different uh, wallpaper files available with all kinds of different images. Okay, while you pull up one more, I want to move over to you, Teresa, okay. so we can get moving here because you have a couple of good ones too. You have something called PopDBF. What is that? PopDBF will bring up a database file on top of whatever application you're running. It's a what's called a TSR, right. it's a memory resident program. I can be in the middle of WordPerfect and maybe I want to change one of my customers' addresses. I can bring up 
PopDBF, it looks in my directory and says, oh, here's your customer database file. Now I can scroll up and down this. This is essentially the browse mode of, uh -huh. of DBase or any, any of the DBase clones and uh, bring up one of these records and edit it. Let's say I know that the, the record I want to edit is from the museum. I can tell it, search anywhere in this, this file for the word museum. Mm. It finds that record for me. Now I can edit it. And go through. So you can access and use a DBase file yes. inside another inside application. Inside any other application. It okay. takes up about 36K of RAM. All right, you have a couple uh, sort of fun ones now. Can oh, Can yes. Man is next. What's Piano very, Man? These are very useful programs. <laughs> 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 Let me get out of WordPerfect here. Okay. You have to take a break when you're oh, working. Oh, definitely. Right? Piano yeah. Man. I'll unload Pop DBFs. Okay. Just to make sure. Here we go. Okay. Uh, Piano Man is a, a fun little program written by Neil Rubin King. Mm -hmm. and you can, it turns your keyboard into a piano. You can also, if you can't play the, your keyboard like a piano, you can bring up other tunes that are already loaded. For example, I'm going to bring up Preludio here and play it. Hmm. And uh, this is coming out of my PC speaker. Yeah. Uh, and all, we can see what it's done. It's translated all your keyboard keys into, into actual music mm -hmm. note keys like a piano keyboard. I can, I can edit this. I can make it uh, faster. Mm -hmm. I can speed it up now mm -hmm. and uh, play it again. Okay. <laughs> Lastly, you have a rather incredible shareware game, I think, called Commander Keen. Mm -hmm. This is a Nintendo-style game that uh, you can pick up on PC Magnet in uh -huh. our After Hours forum. You wander around. Commander Keen has crash-landed on a planet with his little spaceship made out of parts from his mother's uh, vacuum cleaner and that sort of thing. And you're trying to uh, jump over things and jump on top of things. Certain and, the Mario feel to yes, this Yes, it, it definitely, <laughs> right. yeah. I, tr I try to get this gun up here, but I often fail. Oh, I got it this time. It's pretty good that. looking. Yeah, this is not bad for a $15 program. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can register this and, and get a couple more programs by uh -huh. the same author. Mm -hmm. All right, to summarize now, we've seen seven neat little programs here. Guy, uh, where do you get the programs that you showed us, and roughly what do these things cost? Okay, uh, various forums on CompuServe have these programs. FordOS is available on the Computer Consultants Forum. It's a $50 program. Mm -hmm. LCD is available on the IBM Systems Forum. It's a $15 program. LJ2UP is on the uh, Computer Consultants Forum also. That's a no-charge program. Uh -huh. The wallpaper files are mostly free, and they are on the mm. MS Win Forum. And Teresa, your stuff. Mm -hmm. Pop DBF I found in the in one of the libraries, the uh, ASP library of PC Magnet, uh -huh. and uh, as I mentioned, Commander Keen and Piano Man are both in our After Hours forum, which is where we store a lot right. of the fun and games. And you said it was like fifteen dollars for fifteen dollars to right? register Commander yeah. Keen, and you send them thirty dollars, they send right. you three games. <laughs> All right, so, great. Yeah. Thank you very much. Well, there are other places besides bulletin boards to find sleeper software. We found one nice old-fashioned computer store that still saves some shelf space for the little guys. Here's a report. Familiar software titles share shelf space with a lot of small-name programs at this computer store, but owners of Computer Spectrum in Burlingame say that's purely because of economics. In a small store such as ours, that's what we can sell the best. It's, it's harder for us to compete selling Microsoft Excel or Lotus 1, 2, 3, because that's, that's sold everywhere. In our store, we've tried to develop smaller niche market products like uh, accounting software, point of sale software for the PC side. We also sell Amiga products that have a lot to do with video. And that's a strong niche market that's very profitable. An added advantage of the store's size is that it can give personal help to small developers. The creator of this accounting software package got tips on improving his product and even packaging from the store owners. That's about the third incarnation of his package and uh, he would come in, find, ask us what customers asked about, what their requirements were, and we would give him suggestions on just the look of the product and how to, how to work the product. Shareware also sells briskly at Computer Spectrum. Programs are restocked every two weeks and accounting packages are among the most popular. Doss says that because small dealers like him are always on the lookout for specific types of software, programmers should target these dealers. I would suggest to, uh, to know who's going to sell their product. Uh, if they want to stick with mail order or um, bulletin boards, do that. But a lot of the small stores like to find these niche products that they can sell and make money on. Um, so I would suggest to support the smaller store, give them a rolling demo of the product or give them a full demo of the product. Uh, packaging isn't a big uh, factor. I wouldn't say may spend a lot of money in packaging, but uh, make it a good product and uh, people will buy it. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Kate McGargy.
So far, we've looked mainly at sleeper software for the PC. There are lots of goodies out there also for the Macintosh, and here to show off some of their favorites are Steve Bobker, contributing editor with Mac User, and also with us, Ben Templin of Mac User's ZMac. Jan? Ben, I know that you personally have been involved with these types of systems for about three years now. And I'm wondering, have you seen any trends? Have you seen the number of users who log on and actually download software? Have you seen them grow? We're seeing a, a phenomenal growth in uh, uh, people who use BBSs and online services. The, the sales rate of, uh, of modems has just blossomed mm -hmm. beyond the actual sale rate of computers. All right, Steve, let's show them some of the goodies that are up there on ZMac. And uh, I want to ask you to, to show us Stuff It first. And we might clarify, this is not the same Stuff It that people may know of as a commercial product. Right. This is Stuff It Classic, the shareware version. Stuff It Deluxe you'll find in your stores. Okay. Stuff It is a utility program, a standard for compressing files so they can be transmitted more economically or stored more economically. It has a very simple interface. And you simply open a file. Mm -hmm. and tell us what you're doing as you do it. Steve. OK, I'm, I'm double clicking and, and working my way through the standard Macintosh dialogues. And now I have a file here, which is a folder. Mm -hmm. I'll double click on it, and it will ask me what I want to do with it. I'd like to see what this is, so I simply unstuff it, and the program does its little trick. Mm -hmm. And it's done. If I, but by what factor, Steve, can we can we save space here on the disk? It, stuff it varies from the type of application and file, but 40, 50 percent is not uncommon. Oh, now this uh -huh. one had about 30 percent. It looks yeah. like is that right? it tells you how much. Right. It, right. it actually tells you, and, and we could also rather quickly um, compress a file and just any file here. Mm-hmm. So it does it and uh, pretty easy to use with that interface there. Huh? Mm -hmm. Nice, easy interface. We could add more files to this if we wanted to. We right, could Steve, we're really going to pop along okay, here. There's great. a lot of things we want to show. How about the to-do? You've got something called to-do. OK, to-do is, is my personal to-do list. It's a desk accessory. and mm -hmm. It should be right up here at the top. And when I open it, it shows me a list of topics and a list of things to do. There are priorities. Items that I've already done can be checked off. I can take something if I've done it and simply check it. Or I can simply add something very easily by just clicking here and typing in whatever uh, I want. Uh -huh. All right, so kind of a little yeah. mini personal organizer, keep track of what yeah. you're doing there. Yeah, and That's it cute. prints out your to-do lists uh -huh. very nicely. Mm -hmm. I carry one around with me all the time. All right, a related one you have is called Calendar. Calendar is also a desk accessory, so I can just leave to-do right open under it. Uh -huh. It highlights today's date, and it lets me type in messages or do whatever I want here. If I move up a month, you'll see that Another date is scheduled mm -hmm. here, so I remember to actually tape the taping. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Mm -hmm. It actually lets you know which dates are uh, highlighted. Right. Yeah, so there, I mean, there, are, there are functions like this in other bigger programs, but here's a nice simple one. You can just pull up. What's with the globe, by the way? The spinning globe there? <laughs> uh, that's, the pr that's an application running in the background proving that the Mac really is a multitasking computer. <laughs> <laughs> is so that, that shareware also? That's freeware. Freeware. What do you call it? Um, globe. And it just sort of sits there and spins and reminds yeah. you where you are. Huh? A little bit faster, a little bit slower. All right, Steve, I want to ask you to slide the keyboard and the mouse over to Ben now. Ben, you've got a couple of goodies. We're going to have a little more fun here. Steve showed us some serious things. There's a shareware game called Solarian. Yes, this is a, a very professional game. It's a, a wonderfully rich in, um, in uh, its gameplay and as far as uh, the different beasties that you have, and uh -huh. it's very simple. It's much like the, uh, uh, oh, I just uh -huh. got killed there. It's much like the arcade game Galaxa. Right. And you just kill things, and uh, it keeps on getting faster, and uh, it got, got zapped again. Good sounds, good graphics. Yeah. The, the, the nice thing about playing games on the Mac is uh, you can really do it anywhere, even in the office. If, uh, if your boss happens to come by, there's a, a little utility called Big Cheese. And what okay, Big, this is a second program. This is a second program. Called Big Cheese, OK? And what Big Cheese allows you to do is to hide what you're doing 
with a piece of productivity software. <laughs> and there's Red Rider from the introduction. Right. So a lot of games come with that sort of boss screen. And this is a little utility you can dump into any game, whether it comes with a boss right. screen or not. And Big Cheese and uh, uh, Solarian are, bo are both available in ZMAX download library on CompuServe. Uh -huh. All right, now in the last uh, segment, we were looking at PC stuff. We saw Piano Man, which turns your PC keyboard into a piano. I think you have something like that for the Mac called Mac Keyboard. Yes, this is a uh, uh, fun little program. And let me just find it here. Uh, Where did we put Mac Keyboard? Huh? <laughs> I, see, I see the need there for this. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> Again, this is, uh, this is a fun little program. And all you have to do is play the keys. And each uh, key uh, has a responding chord. Can you select what instrument, or is it just guitar on this? Well, you can uh, load load different sound files. Um, uh, I believe it comes with uh, a variety of, uh -huh. of different things uh -huh. that people have developed. Now, let me ask you one more thing I want to ask you to show us before we get to that. Just tell us what ZMac is relatively new, isn't it? And, and how do people access these kinds of things you've been showing Well, ZMac is available on the CompuServe network, though we have the ability uh, to sign up our own subscribers as well. Uh -huh. and if anyone's interested in that, they can just contact us at MacUser or MacWeek. It's an online service that has, uh, as far as the shareware libraries go, it has the editor's choice shareware from a mm -hmm, large universe mm -hmm. of shareware. We've chosen the stuff that's, uh, that's the best uh, to, to, to offer. And it's fully tested, virus-free, um, uh, compatible with most computers. And, and what kinds of costs are we talking about for this stuff? Anywhere from free to probably a, a high of 20 50. Yeah, yeah. 50. Okay. Okay. Yeah. N nothing we've seen here is more than $25. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lastly, one quick thing. You've got something cute. I don't know, garbage or Oscar or something like that to sort of close out with shows. Well, this that. is just one of these uh, uh, desktop enhancers. And of course, we've just put something in the in the trash can, and then we have to empty the trash. <laughs> there's, there's Oscar from So Sesame for our Street. Sesame Street fans, when it, if you've got a kid using a Mac, that sort of helps them identify the environment there. Ben, I noticed that some of these files are rather large. How long does it take to download a file? It depends on a couple of factors. The speed of your modem, what sort of software you're using, the protocol that you choose on CompuServe. The fastest is Quick B. Uh, but the base rate for both CompuServe and ZMac is 1250 an hour. Okay, Solarium, for instance, uh, Steve, took about uh, 700 and some K. How long would that take? Well, if you use uh, Stuff It as we do, it's a lot quicker and uh, it would take almost an hour. Try to do it late at night when the phone lines are much freer. All right, Steve, Ben, thank you very much. That's our look at Sleeper Software. Stay tuned now for this week's Computer News. In the random access file this week, another company is announcing a wireless network system following Apple's announcement last week. Motorola now says it is introducing a new Altair system using radio transmissions to allow up to 32 PCs or peripherals to share data within a 5,000 square foot area. Motorola originally announced the technology about six months ago, but says the actual products have now been developed. Hayes Microcomputer Products is venturing into the network business by announcing a new network operating system for small work groups. The software-only system is called LANSTEP and it will run on Ethernet, Token Ring, or ArcNet LANs. It does not require a dedicated server. The DOS-based software features an icon driver, user interface, and mouse support. Well, Apple hasn't yet reduced the size or weight of the Mac Portable, but the company has announced it's cutting the price. Apple has knocked $1,000 off the price of the Mac Portable, bringing it down to $4,199. That price includes 2 megabytes of RAM and a 40 megabyte hard drive. Apple has modified the Portable to add backlighting to the LCD screen. There are still reports that Apple is planning to introduce a new and smaller notebook-sized Mac Portable later this year. IBM is expected to introduce a new notebook-sized portable in about a month. Preliminary reports say the laptop will be a PS2 machine called the L40SX and that it will look a lot like the Compaq LTE386. The IBM notebook portable will come with a 20 MHz 386 SX processor, 2 MB of memory expandable to 18, and 60 MB hard drive and a VGA Super Twist screen. The IBM laptop is expected to weigh in at 7.5 pounds and be about 2 inches wider than competitive notebook PCs. No word yet on its price. Well, it's time now for this week's software review with Paul Schindler. 
If you want to know everything there is to know about a computer industry subject, you have two choices. You can look through all of these and find out what's been written, catch as catch can, or you can get it all faster with the computer library on CD-ROM. Every month, Ziff Davis puts out one of these CD-ROMs with tens of thousands of abstracts and thousands of full-text articles from more than a hundred computer industry publications. They can be listed using the info function on the main menu. The list includes a number, like the PC letter and the Seabold reports, which cost hundreds of dollars per year each. More than 40 offer full text. The package uses the awkward Lotus Bluefish database search interface. I don't care much for it, but it works. Now, suppose you wanted to look up all of my articles. Simply enter Paul E. Schindler and you can get a list. You can print them out, write them to a file, or view them on the screen. Sure, this is all available online, but at a cost of $24 an hour. If predictable database searching costs are your goal, consider PC Library, $765 annually from Ziff Communications Company in New York. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Paul Schindler. Taking a look at this week's top 10 software titles for the PC, PC Connection reports that TurboTax for Chipsoft is in the number one position with Quicken in second. Third is Expanded Memory Manager, followed by Entertainment Pack for Windows. Andrew Tobias's Tax Cut 1990 Taxes is in fifth place. Rounding out the top 10 PC titles are Adobe Type Manager, WordPerfect 5.1, Norton Antivirus, Windows 3.0, and Procom Plus. Borland has announced a new visual language programming tool called Object Vision. It's Borland's first Windows-based program, and it allows users to create applications by simply diagramming the functionality they want to have in the program. Borland says end users can now create applications without needing to use a procedural programming language. Commodore, known more for the low end of the personal computer market, says it's now entering the Unix market. Commodore has introduced the new Amiga 3000 UX, a Unix workstation. It's basically a standard Amiga 3000 computer, custom fitted to run AT&T's Unix System 5 Release 4. The Amiga 3000 UX also comes standard with the Amiga DOS operating system, so you kind of get two computers in one. And finally, a company called Promised Land Technologies has introduced a product called BrainCell. The company says it's a neural network program that can reside inside an Excel spreadsheet and do its own analysis based on the figures and labels you input. BrainCell has algorithms to allow it to forecast stock market prices or analyze scientific data. And Promise Land Technology says BrainCell can even generate betting tips on horse racing. That's it for this week's Computer Chronicles. I'm Kate McGargy. The Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by the Software Publishers Association, which reminds you it's a federal offense to copy software. The SBA provides information on how to stay software legal. Funding is also provided by PC Connection and Mac Connection, and by Byte Magazine and Bix. For a transcript of this week's Computer Chronicles, send $4 to PTV Publications, Post Office Box 701, Kent, Ohio, 44240. Please indicate program date.